Hello church, it's another wonderful moment that I can talk with you. Uh, I know we are under lockdown, but our prayers are not locked down. And that is very important. I've been talking to children here, people here, different people, and it's a sad thing to see how people are blaming God for what is happening. Everybody says God is bringing this to us. And, uh, but when you read the Bible and, and look at the coronavirus, you realize that coronavirus is evil and God is not evil. So I was really looking at that and uh, I want to start with a scripture from James. James chapter 1 verse 13 says, When tempted, no one should say God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he tempt anyone. So, looking at that, realities, in reality, corona is evil. Corona, the coronavirus is evil. COVID-19 is evil, and that can't be coming from God, for sure. And I love the Lord's Prayer that says, where Jesus teaches us, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Our, our part in all this is telling us to pray that we are not led into temptation and that we are delivered from evil. And that is what is important in this season. And what is very interesting in the Bible, you can read many stories or about many people. There were good people in the Bible that were attacked by, the, by bad people. And they were doing the right thing. And today I want to look at uh, one man called Hezekiah, King Hezekiah. When you read in 2 Kings chapter 18, uh, you see King Hezekiah and when you read chapter 18 verse 3 says he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord just as his father David had done he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord just as his father David had done but going down when you continue down and look at uh, you reach verse 17 a king, the Assyrian king called Sennacherib, attacks him and he besieges Jerusalem. And uh, from that moment, bad things start happening. So, one point I want you to know even good people are attacked. So, <laughs> we cannot say, I'm not for sure that. Corona is coming, the coronavirus is coming because we are bad. But maybe it is coming because we are doing something good also. So I'm not sure about that, but one thing I can tell you, I can pray in these times, and you can pray, and there is something you can do in this time that we are in. Jesus says, pray like this. And what he tells us to pray, that we are not led into temptation, and God delivers us from evil. And that's important. That's what is going on here. When you read about King Hezekiah. So verse 17 says, The king of Assyria sent his supreme commander, his chief officer, his field commander with a large army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. They came up to Jerusalem and stopped at the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the wash, washerman's field. They called for the king and Eliakim, son of Hil Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder, went out to them. The field commander said to them, Tell Hezekiah, this is what the great king, the king of Assyria says. On what are you basing this confidence of yours? You say you have, a, you have the counsel and the might for war, but you speak only empty words. On whom are you depending? Are you a rebel against me? 
and they continue saying bad things. So, to him, uh, verse 12 says, How can you repulse one officer of at least of my master's officials, even though you are depending on Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Furthermore, have I come to attack and destroy this place without a word from the Lord? The Lord himself told me to march against this country and destroy it. So you see what's going on here. The king is under fire. And I want to talk about the second thing is managing bad news. You know, we are glued to television. Messages coming in from the government, messages coming in from different people and different persons. Some of them are true, some are not true, but whether they are true or not true, the important thing is how we respond to these messages. How are you responding to these messages? You can bury yourself in a blanket and keep crying. You can stop eating. You can stop pr praying or even playing. You can stop a lot of things because of the bad news. But how did Hezekiah respond to bad news? How do you respond to bad news? Because bad news will always be there. And let me tell you, the last few <laughs> weeks have been weeks of bad news. I've been getting this and that and that. And then you have a group of people you're caring for, for uh, not just one person, maybe a thousand people or more. And the bad news says, I'm not able to do this. And this is happening. It's all, you can be gripped with fear and stop doing anything in life because of the bad news. But let us see how Hezekiah responded to the bad news. When you go to chapter 19, this was the Bible. When Hezekiah king heard this, verse 1, when King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, went into the temple of the Lord, he sent Eliakim, the, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. When Hezekiah got the bad news, he ran to the temple of God. He also sent some of his officials to the prophet Isaiah to tell him what is happening to ask him also to talk to God about what is going on. And they did it faithfully in that moment. If you continue reading chapter 19, they all prayed to God. And verse 14 of chapter 19, Hezekiah received a letter, again a letter, bad news. Again what? Bad news. from Senashiri. And Hezekiah, when he got a bad letter, Hezekiah, the Bible says, Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers, read it, then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. He got the bad news. What did he do with the bad news? He took it before God and spread it before God and said, God, look, listen to his prayer. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned between the shelving, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made the heaven and the earth. Give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see and listen to the words Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the living God. And I want to talk to you. The coronavirus is a ridicule to the living God. Something that wants to stop people from praying. Something that wants to stop people from fellowshipping. Something that wants people destroyed and killed massively. Something 
that scares lies and brings fear is not from God. We can all go to God and plead on Him and say, God, help us here. We need your help. We need your intervention. Put it before God in prayer. And in verse 17, he said, It is true, Lord, that Assyrian king, the Assyrian king have laid waste to these nation, nations and their lands. They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them. For they were not gods, but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. Lord, our God, deliver us with him. Deliver us from his hand, so that the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are, you alone, Lord our God. Let us plead with God for help. I know many have died from the coronavirus. I know many nations are gripped with fear. I know for sure it is danger, a dangerous thing. But we have a living God on our side who can help us. If you can lay on your floor and pray, take some days. You're already at home. Fast and seek the face of God. If you can spend hours praying, you pray. Talk to God. And God is going to help us and do something about this situation because we have called upon his name. If you continue in that chapter, chapter 19, God responds. And when God responds, he does something bigger. I love verse 39 saying, That night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, they were all the, there were all the dead bodies. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. One day while he was worshipping in the temple of his god Nisra, Nisra his son Abramel and Shareza killed him in, with a sword and they escaped to the land of Ararat. And Esa Haddon, his son, succeeded him as king. So when they were praying and seeking the face of God, King Hezekiah praying, the leaders praying, the nation praying, the people praying, because they encouraged everybody to seek the face of God, God intervened in just a second. And that was the end of something that had brought fear, terrorized the whole city and the kingdom of Israel or the kingdom of Judah. So let us pray and God will help us. Let us call on his name and God will help us. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, look at all this fear. And for sure you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. In these times, we call upon you. I pray that you empower everyone to open their mouth, to seek your face, to call upon you. Whether it's a child, a man, a woman, young people, or whatever caliber, wherever they are, let them seek your face. And Lord, we pray that you hear us from heaven and deliver us from these demons that have attacked our society, attacked our people. Demons fighting the good things that are being done. Demons trying to stop the work of God. May you stretch your hand against every wicked power. This de demon called the coronavirus, wherever it is coming from, we repulse it, we destroy it. In the name of Jesus Christ, you say, Lord, when we pray, you will answer. Ask and shall be given to seek and you find. Knock and the door will be opened. You say in your word that call unto me, I'll show you great things and such old things you don't know. You say in your word, Lord my Father, that whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we release on earth shall be released in heaven. And we hold you by your word, Lord our God, to intervene 
in this situation. Don't let us down. Don't forsake us. Come to our deliverance and we we'll praise and worship you, the only true and living God, able to help your people. I pray for all those, fear, those fearful hearts that you revive them to stop fearing and do the right thing in this time. I pray that we all respond like Hezekiah. We will not run to the television and stay there and keep the bad news, but we'll get the bad news and put them before the throne of God. Yes, 100,000 in the U.S. have got over 100,000. China has many numbers, and many other people have many numbers, but we bring all those numbers of people with the coronavirus and those who have died, and we put it before you, and we say, Lord, look at this calamity. Look at this destruction. Look at this mess, and do something about it. We need your help. We need your deliverance. Not a human hand is going to intervene in this, but your hand, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.